How is everybody? Welcome back to Little Sneakers, baby. I'm Michael fucking Rainey here with Cat on Jala. Hey, buddy. Jacob hey, Furman Matera. Hey, hey. Danny Dubs. Welcome back, everybody. Man, so much to talk about. Jake was popping off to somebody at the live show last night. We had a little little ass comedy show at Helium, and Jake told some motherfucker to shut the fuck up because oh, he was man. acting up during the show. I was so proud of you. Uh, when we, was that? It was uh, when I was sitting next to Danny over there. I was, uh -huh. yeah, we were just somebody wouldn't shut the fuck up. It's the cardinal rule of comedy mm. show. If I, you know, I let him. I gave him a little bit of room. He let Finally, him cook. No, I let him cook. Nobody came over. I was like, all right, I got to take this into my own hands. And I just tapped them. Uh, them. He was close enough to tap. I tapped them, and they turned around. And I was like, "Hey, can you just like just can you be quiet, please? Thank you." And they just kind of did. St like just stared at me. The Straight whole white guy, Jake. Uh, no, uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know their sexual orientation or their ethnicity. It was a dark room. Um, Describe the body. Uh, you know what? Very baggy <laughs> clothing. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, they just stared at me, and I was like, "Yeah, uh, just just keep it down." Thank the second you. Second thing, you shut up. Thank, I said it like four times because they just they just held the look at me like that, Ooh. eyebrows raised, like you did not say that to me. Wow, Jake, you're a good bad boy. And I just he fucking I just boy. fucking locked eyes. I was like, "Thank you, shut up." You watched it Thank go down? You. No, I heard about it, but yeah. I love when he gets second, bad. Second hand, he heard it second hand. <laughs> I'm your second hand news. Yeah, you're like a damn beast from Beauty and the Beast. Oh man, I good for like, you. Claws were coming out. Mm-hmm. Danny saw it. He's right? coming out next week. You know who's coming? Down. It was it was great. Because <laughs> it, yeah. it wasn't just once. Like he had to like I said, and he got firmer each time. Yeah, I did. Oh, he was yeah. getting firmer. Firmer. Yeah, I was getting firmer for sure. <laughs> yeah. What was the gentleman yelling out? No, they were just conversing. Uh, like somebody would say something. Like I think I, one of the suggestions of the show last night, which was great, is do rag and the deer tags uh mm -hmm. two off the top. Was like, uh, was it White Trash Rosa Parks? And they're like, don't say that again. And I was like, all right, dude, chill, chill out. Oh, all they right? were wasted then. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he just started talking about something, then brought it back. They make her sit in the back of the double wide. <laughs> Mike has assumed this person's gender both ways. <laughs> <laughs> Refuses both. to say they. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they uh, were wearing a a Danny. What? How did you describe it? A backpack. Um. You know the like purse backpack that like, from like the nineties, like what's back in style now? Yeah, the little leather straps and a tiny bag. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Damn. yeah. Okay, you should have went full door on his ass. You should have been like, grab your backpack, let's go. <laughs> I'm gonna be that ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fuck uh, me up. Don't get fucked up. <laughs> That's what you should have said. Yeah, I. But you nailed it, Furman. Thank you. Yeah, I think he should have said what he said. Maybe I should get a job <laughs> doing security at Helium. You should. Yeah, they got a great staff there. I'll get a job in the kitchen. I <laughs> and we can be work friends. That would be fun. We can quit comedy. Oh, my God. Yeah. Could you sell me drugs? <laughs> sure. All right. <laughs> I can right sell now. you drugs. We can sell everybody drugs. You John, why don't you get yourself high in front of everybody right now? Oh, right now? <clears throat> you got a sweatshirt on. Get yourself high. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just logic I can't say no to. <laughs> Mike, you're so smooth. Do you want to be an usher? I just want to get your attention. My pen. I really want to get you to sit in your seat. Because <laughs> we're about to turn the lights off. Oh! That kind of usher? Yeah, I like that. I'll be that usher, baby. My pen's broken. I have to, like, MacGyver it. Uh-oh. Got to Fonz it. Um, Shove it up Jake's ass and try it. There we right. go. <laughs> the whistles go, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, yeah, it works. <laughs> <laughs> you fixed it, baby. There you go. All right. And now I'm fixed. You've been you you came in this room talking Casey Anthony. <coughs> She's got you riled up now. Yo, somebody from the sh uh, the show last night grabbed me and was like, "So you think she's innocent, right?" And I was like, "Oh, dude." This, was it uh, Jeannie? I don't know. I, Jeannie and Sean. I didn't introduce, but no, it wasn't them. It was uh, somebody else. Uh, sadly, I didn't get your name. Sorry, uh, but I was just like, she sincerely believed that Casey Anthony was uh, innocent. Mm -hmm. As did I a week ago. Yeah, she's entitled to her own opinion. Yes, and rightfully so. But I mean, it was a grip. It was a grip. You know, you know, it was a grip. I know you're watching. It was a grip. And uh, and yeah, I saw some more footage today. And I was like, I don't know. I think she may have done it again. Good. Yeah. Oh no, I did it again. Just show me a new. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you weren't even pregnant. What? <laughs> All right, you boys ready to flip that motherfucking coin? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, I would love to talk about the Jokers. You know, we're coming up on a year without Joe in the, in the he squad. He passed away? 
No, he left the fucking Jokers. Ah, oh, that's Christ right. Yeah. Do we know why he left the Jokers yet? Mm-mm. Uh, that would be and a good I episode to do it. to speculate. Here we go. Here we go. Fuck. God damn it. Oh. I'm glad you lost again. Woo. Are you? Yeah. I got a special boy tonight. Yeah? Wait. I know someone who killed... Who? Huh? Mike Rainey and Sh- uh, Ryan Shaner last night. Oh, you devil, at Jake. At the show. You Those were killers. Funny. We were we were showing our damn asses last night. Yeah, it was a great show. I I I was I was so mad that we didn't save this for the save for the stage. Of uh, what? Uh, right <coughs> before we left, Shana and I started talking about Chris Benoit, <laughs> and I said to him, I was like, "Right, wouldn't it have been funny if between the time when Benoit killed his wife and kids, and the time when he offed himself, is if he was just dancing around the house like risky business." <laughs> <laughs> And then we started acting like like uh, Chris Benoit, Risky Business. Oh, my God. Just take that bow flex off the track. <laughs> <laughs> my wife and kids ain't got no damn souls. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and Shader said uh, he instead of uh, using, like, the uh, the broom, he'd be holding his kid and using his limp arm. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you guys got pretty dark. I think it's better off you didn't Whoa. do that. Uh, we have fun though, baby. <laughs> I'll say you're off. Shanner and I really have oh a good my time. God, so I love Shanner so much, man. He's the fucking best. All right. Well, I'm glad I won again. John, I do hope you win someday. And I have a feeling that will happen sooner rather than later. I think so too. It's bound to happen. I, I feel it in the air. It might be that smart, that fart that I smell. That might be what I feel in the air. But I truly believe the tides are going to turn in your favor. Is that why you're crying right now? <laughs> <laughs> I had Taco Bell for lunch. Did you? I had three Taco Supremes and a bean burrito. That's your order. Uh, you never stray from it, and I really like that about you. Thank you. I didn't get a Baja Blast, though. Why not? Because I was trying to be good, and I was trying to like uh, chill out on the soda. Then our dear friends from the Trash Cast sent us a fucking cube of goddamn soda that I can't stop drinking now. So thank you to Jason and, and John from the fucking Trash Cast. Those guys are the best. Thank you, Trash Cast. Thanks for the cheer wine, boys. Alright. Y'all ready to meet tonight's stinker? I'm excited. I'm gonna bring him out. Marcel! I'm teasing. He's not here. <laughs> Jesus. I, dude, my heart just fucking dropped. Take it back out for him because I'm about to introduce this boy. Uh, this is our first Frenchman, I believe. Ooh. Do you, either of you speak French? You illiterate fucks? No, but I don't know why you had to be Wait, so rude about it. Uh, is retreat a French word? No. Is that no. a joke about them being war cowards? That's exactly what I was going for. Okay. I had the military jacket. I had to make that joke. Yeah, and you were eating Freedom Fries on the way in, I saw. <laughs> <laughs> He's got them in his pocket like you got your hot dogs. Oh, no, what do you do with your hot dog when you have a sweatshirt on? I have a little hot dog pocket. Oh, you <sighs> fucker. No. Oh. Ah, it's fucking ketchup and mustard in here. Shit. You dildo. <laughs> All right. This show. I, I, I hate French people. Okay. <laughs> I just want that to be known. All right. I don't think we have a single fan there. I think you're going to like this guy, though. You think so? Yeah. Oh, man. I hope this isn't the first French guy that I like. I'm going to tell you his name, then I'm going to tell you his nickname, and you're going to love one or both of them. All right. A beautiful name, uh, Marcel Petio. I like it. Nice. Mm-hmm. His nickname was Dr. Satan. <laughs> Pretty good, right? That's some very. That's I feel cool. like Shaner has a patch of that on his jacket. <laughs> He's got a tram stamp of Doctor Satan. Yeah. <laughs> Doctor Satan? Did he give that to wow. himself? No, the uh, the community gave it to him. Wow, really? That's that's really a big deal when a community gives you your name. Those haircuts are so. Or those haircuts. The the names are so different because he sounds like a hairdresser with his real name, and then a fucking wrestler with the second one. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. Dr. Satan. Do you know how it's um, said in French by any chance? Dr. Satan? I have no idea. I think it actually it's pronounced Satan. Ooh. There's a lot of hockey players that have like that spelling. Yeah, there. Miroslav Satan. Yeah. And you think their last name is Devil? I'm not making the fucking rules, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tell us about this French fucker. <laughs> So this motherfucker was born in uh, January 17th, 1897 in an area of France called Auxerre. Okay. Ooh. And I believe I'm pr- pronouncing that correctly. His parents were, parents were Felix and Marta, and he had a little-ass brother named Maurice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You need to plug him back in. <laughs> that was a... Uh... <laughs> you say plug him back in? <laughs> I think I tried to, but... <laughs> Yeah, that motherfucker's name was Maurice. Maurice and Marcel. Marcel. Yeah. 
Uh, Two little French boys. Little right M&Ms. Around. That's probably what this mom called them. <laughs> little pussy-ass boy M&Ms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good, Jake. Thank you. Don't ever do that again All on right, this podcast. I'm so sorry. So sorry. <laughs> I will not do it again. All right. Now, one thing about Marcel, when he was a little-ass boy, he was pissing the damn bed. He was torturing some damn animals. Uh, he was having seizures left and right. And he was sleepwalking. That's uh, that's <laughs> fucking more checks on the box than any other. I guy. believe you're right. Yeah. All at the same time. That's fucking five out of three. <laughs> Later in life, he's setting fires. But as a child, there's no evidence of him being an arsonist. Okay. A little ass baby arsonist. You know Wouldn't what? That'd be cute. <laughs> French arson. Mm-hmm. A little baby mustache. A wee wee. <laughs> yeah, baby. Let the fire. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. That was not French. Jake, what uh, you got in that tumbler? Oh, uh, man. It's more cheer wide. Oh. It's all cheer wide. Sweet baby <laughs> devil. Now, this poor thing, he had a tough time at school. He was expelled from numerous schools, Jake. Okay. What kind of shit do you think he was expelled for? Injuring animals. No, threatening classmates. In 19 fucking 08. Dude, getting kicked out, expelled from a school in 1908, you gotta be a bad boy. Dog, wait till you hear what the fuck he did. What do you think he got expelled for in 1908? Uh, uh, spells? No. No. Uh, bringing a knife into school. That was one of them. Ooh. For real? One of the things he did yes. was uh, he locked his teacher out of the room. He stood with his back to the door, and he brought a bunch of knives to school, and he started throwing them at his classmates. Holy shit. Wow. Pretty right. cool. A little Frenchman <laughs> Columbine. I'm glad you brought that up, because he also brought his father's gun to school. God damn. And he threatened a classmate with it. All right. Yeah. That'll get you tossed. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine, like, one of your classmates threatening to let the chopper sing in 1908? <laughs> Dude, almost the first school shooter. Wow. He almost made it. Yeah. It was almost a real mark in the history books. <laughs> I'm going to let you do most of the talking from yeah. here on out. I like it when yeah, you do no. it. I got, he fumbled at the one yard line is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. No. Could have been the first. So he gets a little bit older. And in 1916, he is 19 years old, Jake. He joins the French army and fights in World War I. Well, we know how French did in that. Man, you guys really hate these people. Oh, man. You're a fan of the French? I'm, listen, I don't hate anybody. Them and their cheeses. Would you I'm go watching. to Paris? I would send you there because it's known as Gay Paris. I wouldn't go because it's gay. You'd have a fucking parade in your honor. <laughs> He'd have a ratatouille in his ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd lo- I don't know. I'd go anywhere. Okay. I would not go. Why not? I would go to um, the Alps, but I would not step foot in Paris. I just hate them. I don't like them. I would go what about uh, New Orleans? What about it? Because it's French. And it's like, nah. But dude, I it's oh, more hood than French. If if I can <laughs> argue anything, I mean that time period, the like World War One to World War Two, that's like the Gilded Age. That's like uh, Gertrude Stein, John, uh, Ernest Hemingway, F. Scott Fitzgerald, his Were they wife, in Fran- France. Yeah, they're all like. Expatriates living there at that time. Hmm. Jake, who's the um, who's the lady writer you turned me on to? The story Flannery about O'Connor. Yeah, the story about like the car breaking down and the people. Yeah, that good man is hard to find. That's yeah, it was a really good story. Oh, you did read it? I did. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you can read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had Jake Neal next to my bed at night. And he, <laughs> yeah. And he audio booked it to me. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> but he was um, he was in World War One. And he got fucked up from some of that poison gas. You know what I'm mm. talking about, brother. Was he was he <laughs> bunked next to you? Is that what, it is? what the fuck is wrong with both of you tonight? I didn't say anything, but I will now. <laughs> You're not normally mean to me. I'm, I'm normally sorry. mean to you. I didn't I'm say anything sorry. mean. I just complained about your stank ass earlier. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's a cheer wine, Mike. So get this. So he comes back from uh, from World War One. He's discharged because he has a psychotic break. So he stays in various mental homes. And while this, this isn't like a mental hospital. It's just like homes that take care of people that are fucked up from the war. So he's staying at various mental homes. And he gets kicked out. And he ends up getting put in a psych hospital for stealing morphine from these mental homes. So that's going to become a little, little bugaboo of his. 
He is a big. He becomes a big morphine thief. Oof, hmm. my man. <laughs> <laughs> There is a Kensington over there. Oh, no, it's in England. Yeah. Never mind. Mm -hmm. that, that didn't work. Now, during his time in the psych hospital, he gets diagnosed with something called neurasthenia. That's a Metallica album, right? <laughs> no, it's a cashier at Dollar Tree. <laughs> <laughs> bought, a, bought a comb from her just last week. You know it's time for me to go on my damn break. Uh, neurasthenia, can you please just wait on the last eight people in line? <laughs> Eight people. <laughs> uh, I, I would be one of those eight. <laughs> Danny, I almost shattered your headphones patting my own weave. <laughs> I wasn't about to scratch it. Oh, dude, one of my favorite things that I miss working in urban schools is watching a black woman be at war with her own fingers to prevent herself from scratching her own head. What do you mean? She's it like, ruins the weave. Uh, that, that's why they, they get the smacking. Yeah. So what, she would just... You could tell that she wanted to scratch her oh, head. Oh, dude, could not. the harder they smack, the itchier they are. Isn't that the same effect, though? If you're hitting it with the palm of your hand, you're essentially doing the same thing. I mean, you're not getting your claws in there, yeah. but... Brother, the That's how I used to have to itch my head when I had when I was a white person with dreadlocks. <laughs> Jake, the next time your balls itch, I want you to smack them instead of scratching them. Tell me how <laughs> yeah, that feels. That's, yeah, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> fair. It works. The method works. I want you to smack those two little black girls in your... <laughs> <laughs> Tia and Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> Have you met the sisters? Referring to your balls as the sisters. I'm doing it tonight. Dude, yeah, you got to. Yeah. Your balls are yeah. not your sisters. <laughs> you, get your yeah. you get your wife to suck on Tia and Tamara, and the first thing you say is T G I F. <laughs> Trying to get his sister deep in that ass. Tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's give your sister a call. <laughs> this soda hit different. Oh, really? Are on? It's not even caffeine in there. Oh, brother, what's in it then? Something else. I don't know. Magic. Yeah. Oh, baby. All right, so this motherfucker, uh, neurasthenia means persistently disturbed. Oh, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a, it's a very kind way of saying this motherfucker's crazy. Well, he's got PTSD. He does. What's that stand for? Uh, Putting up with too damn <laughs> much of your shit. <laughs> now, you can't read, dude. That was <laughs> None of that was he, right. Yeah, he lost it on that one. <laughs> um... So eventually, he's committed to an asylum, and while he's in there, he can't just be a regular-ass patient. He starts pretending that he's a doctor. Love it. Yeah, it's great. All right, I'm, going, I'm cool. starting to like French people now. It's a really great use of your time when you do that. Yes. Eventually, he, he enjoys being a pretend doctor so much that when he gets out, he finds out about a medical school program for wounded veterans. He gets all his schooling paid for it, and this motherfucker becomes a doctor in 1921. Whoa. No way. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Except for later what? when he's called Dr. Satan. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, you're going to like this, too. So when he becomes a doctor, he wants to drum up business for himself because he, he, he wants to have his own place. He wants to be successful. He starts, he starts uh, making flyers that are like rave reviews of his medical prowess. He's making his own fake Yelp reviews. Yeah, as though there are patients writing these and he's leaving them around town to drum up business for his practice. That's I like genius. that. Yeah. It is cool. Once he gets his own practice, he starts prescribing morphine to everyone. Stolen he, morphine. No, this is legit morphine. Oh, wow, okay. So he starts pres prescribing morphine to everyone, including children. How is How do you take morphine back then? Is it a pill? Uh, it's probably liquid. Okay. Up your butt. Nice. Oh, that, that's what I should do for you. Get in the heroin, but only butt wives. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find a vein. <laughs> <laughs> Tie my cheeks off. <laughs> <clears throat> so he's getting everybody in town high. He's getting everybody fucked up. And he starts giving it to kids so much that one of his colleagues becomes aware of it. And he's like, Dr. Satan, you need to chill with the fucking <laughs> Pepsi Fuller. <laughs> and uh, there was one kid in particular that this doctor stepped in to say, like, look, you can't keep giving this kid morphine. 
and this kid just had like a fucking cough or something. And Dr. Satan goes, uh, why should I stop giving it to him? This kid's only pestering his mother. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he was just ha- trying to have him pass out on the couch so his mom could do her thing? Yeah. Was he trying to bone the mom? Ooh, that's a great point. And um, I love the way you think sometimes. Oh, I'm a horny guy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, because he ends up marrying one of his patient's daughters. Oh, so he's not afraid to uh, to dip his uh, hand in the uh, cotton ball container, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I think I get it. <laughs> Trying to make him say ah, and make him say mm. <laughs> make him turn to the left and cough. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, he was married to a man because French people are all gay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up about tearing head and coughing. That, that's what we should do. We should challenge ourselves. The next time each of us gets blown from our wives, the first thing we're going to do is turn to the left and cough. <laughs> then we got to report back. Oh, yeah. man. Am I doing all right down there? <laughs> How are the sisters doing? <laughs> Tia's all right, but Tamara's a little twisted. <laughs> I had a twisted uh, testicle before. I've heard about this. Yeah. I talked to a gentleman today who brought up twisted testicles only because he mentioned that the worst pain that he'd ever felt was a broken dick. Were you on the bus? No. I was going to say, (laughs) the guy behind you at Starbucks? Yeah. Uh, (laughs) It was a friend of mine at the gym. But the broken dick and the twisted ball are different, right? They are different. He said they wanted to be sure. Like, when he went in for the broken dick, he said his shit was so swollen. Jesus. That they wanted to make, I think it's called, like, uh, uh, testicle torsion. Uh, yes. Which is a heavy metal band as well. Mm-hmm. I believe it. <laughs> they opened for Cannibal Corp, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't have the uh, the twisted testes, but he did have broken pee pee. What was the, how do you break a penis? What was wrong with it? Right in the bus, dude. How do you think you break a dick? <laughs> Slam and vag, obviously, but, yes. but yes. it doesn't break. Well, whatever snaps. Yeah. It, like, you can snap it. Yeah, you can. Oh my God. And yeah. then they put it in the cast and you get your boys to sign it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'd, glue, I'd glue Skittles to John's. <laughs> is that something you would do to a cast? To your did cast. You hide, did you hide Skittles in your cast when you broke your No. <laughs> yeah, Skittles was his frog. <laughs> the doctor didn't <laughs> broke it open. It was rotting fucking... It was like a dead frog in here. <laughs> oh, man, I miss that, that old cast smell. You ever have a cast? Mm-mm. Oh, baby. No. My own. You miss it? Isn't it smell like a fucking turtle tank or something? When it comes off, yeah. yeah. But I love that like shit. It's like a fucking leather watch after you wear it and the sweat in it. Oh, brother. In summer. I, uh, the only cast, I think I only had one cast. At arm. least the first cast that I had, yeah, it was on my right arm. I broke my wrist like two days before we went to Disney World for the first time. And I, I had to wear a, uh, a plastic bag in the pool. Yeah. And I remember um, I had to feed dolphins with my other hand at SeaWorld. <laughs> And you were all perked up doing it. <laughs> I was a child. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if I had been seeing Dr. Satan, I would have been a You'd perked been up morphed child. Up. It's morphing time. <laughs> <laughs> I got to do morphine before I die. I got to try it. I did. I brought home, I brought some home one night. Like it's a fucking uh, <laughs> lemon loaf. But I brought some morphine home one night. Uh, a friend of mine had given it to me at a show we did. And I was like just sitting on the couch fucked up. And my wife's like, are you all right? I was like, yeah, I just took a little morphine. <laughs> and I was so surprised that she was angry that I did that. Oh, my God, my You were surprised at her anger that you took something they give to dying fucking soldiers? I'm an artist, baby. <laughs> 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 all right, moving on. You got to let me create on the couch. <laughs> I'm just writing. And you are. You were actually probably just, writing a book in your head. Staring at the wall. Just, yeah. Man, what an error that was. And that was liquid? No, that was a pill. Okay. Man, you've done fucking morphine? How have I never heard this before? Yeah, I had a blast, man. I really had a good time. Just one time, one night? Just that one time, yeah. And you just zonked on the couch. Couldn't yeah. get up. Yeah. Yeah, it was fine. Did you get some snacks? Were you hungry? No, I just, I drank like a hundred beers that night, <laughs> sat on the couch, <laughs> enjoyed some morphine. <laughs> yes, I can't wait to do that. Oh, oh man, it, it really was the best. You still have a morphine guy by any chance? No. Fuck. Well, my morphine guy is now a morphine girl. <laughs> That's fine. They, they morphed. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jake, you have just set the trans movement back so far. No! <laughs> I didn't realize you meant that. <laughs> yeah. Morph is such a funny fucking word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that mighty Morphin Power Range him is now a mighty Morphin Power Range her. Um, Why is there no more just, Morph stuff? Just so you know, that might have been what he yelled at last night. The person in the crowd yelled Morph? No. What? But Furman was yelling at a possible... <sighs> a Power, Power Ranger? Ranger? Yeah. No. I think so. I know. You... Jake. The one was a lady with a mustache. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that was not a lady. You did a pretty good job of not uh, saying one way or the other now earlier, and now you're you're going all in. <laughs> uh, you, you guys trapped me. This is entrapment. Yeah, you, <laughs> I got your ass. Come on <laughs> <No>. out, Morph. <laughs> <laughs> His motherfuckers turning into J.K. Rowling right before our eyes. Look at him. They had, they, had a, <laughs> they had a better mustache than I ever could have, so. Jake, you are not doing yourself any favors. I'm right trying now. to, like, if they are, I'm trying to be respectful. Seems like it. Of the pronouns. It's easier to go the they route than the he or she route. Mm -hmm. Right? Until I, you I figure agree. it out. But is that why you... Yelled at them so angrily. <laughs> no, they were talking during a comedy show. What uh? And what race would you say they were? All right, me? two wrongs don't make a right. I I want to say that right now, but they were of uh of the African American descent. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Okay. I mean, I don't know what the makeup is. I don't have their twenty three and me in front of me, but um. And you shushed them. I shushed, I shushed pretty hard. I didn't say shush. I just said, shut up. Uh, you what? Thank you. No, no, I didn't say you anything. <clears throat> but then they just stared. They just stared at me, and I just kept saying, shut up. Please be quiet. Thank you. Was it necessary for you to knock the hot Cheetos out of their hand? Oh, my God. No, no, it was not necessary. <laughs> All right, well. Necessary, no. <laughs> Unwarranted, yes. Funny? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I feel like we're losing touch with Dr. Satan. Please, here. yes, let's get back to Dr. <laughs> Satan. Yeah, it's just kind of fun. I found out that Bayer, the pharmaceutical company, in the 19th century, they used to give, uh, they used to um, uh, provide morphine, which was generally used for children's coughs. Hmm. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you need, little boy? Baby needs some morphine. <laughs> I'm trying to get fucked up on the couch tonight. <laughs> Watch Beauty and the Beast. You ever had intrapenis morphine? <laughs> <laughs> I got a drip ready for you. <laughs> mm, come get this drip. Let me know when you're ready. Stop telling me to suck your dick in weird ways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm French, baby. I'm a French artist. <laughs> we do what the fuck we want. Oh, this was a funny fact that I found out about him. Dr. Satan would try to ward off seizures as they were coming by chewing on his own tongue. Yikes. Mm. Damn. Isn't that, like, dangerous? Can't you, like, bite your tongue off if you're having a seizure? Yeah. That's why anyone who's prone to seizures is supposed to stay with a spoon in their mouth. They have to carry a spoon around? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're fucking real right now. I What? Are you serious? You've never heard about uh, having a spoon ready for people with epilepsy? No. Yes. It is. That's the thing, right? Any kind of wooden dowel. Like, it is. And in China... Something, something you use to stir gnocchi with? And Jake, in China, they put chopsticks in their mouth. That makes sense. And if you're making a joke, it's <laughs> not even risque. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. I don't think the Chinese have seizures. What do they have? I don't think they get them. Or maybe Japan people don't. Japan people. That's how you say it. Jesus. <laughs> Just say they. I think we should edit out the last 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start over. Okay. <laughs> All right, so our brother, Dr. Satan, falls in love with the daughter of a patient. This bitch's name is Louise Delavue. That sounds like devil. 
That is yeah. good. Yeah. And she is how I, old? I don't fucking know, man. Is she I, inappropriate? She's not like a fucking 14 year old I hope not. daughter of a patient or anything. I hope not. Okay. Speaking of which, did you see that scary movie that's coming out called Megan? No. It looks no. very fucked up. I don't like scary movies. You would like this. And I don't like French people. All right, well. <laughs> so I have two tickets, and I'm only taking one of you. <laughs> but it looks pretty creepy, because it's a, an animatronic doll that's supposed to be used as a child's friend and also as a de facto nanny. Hmm. And, and then it, it murders? It just might. And here's the deal. You're a creep if you say this, but it's either a child or a pretty hot lady. The robot. Yes. Are you turning off your phone so that the government doesn't hear you? <laughs> no, I'm about to show you this doll before we move on because I want you to see this. Is that part of the uh, premise that That's the no tagline of the tell? movie. <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks like John now. <laughs> <laughs> That looks like a child to me. Uh, All right, you know, it well. does. No, it it does look like a child, but also kind of looks like Charlize Theron. Yeah, that's why I thought like early on. Yeah, yeah, that's why I thought you would fuck it, Jake. No, I <laughs> would not do that. But yeah, that's creepy, and that's coming out. And I have two passes. It really, you do. Yeah, I saw an ad for uh, a um, an offer for two free passes, and I got those bitches. Nice. Yeah. I thought you don't like free shit. I usually don't, but I have taken people up on free movie passes. Okay. I went to go see that uh, Coen Brothers movie. What was that? Uh, Inside Lewin Davis. No, where they sang, sang the song No Dames. Uh, the one with Channing Tatum. Yeah, that was a great one. Uh, yeah, I forgot what it was. The communist one. Yeah. Whatever it was called. Yeah, but that's what I went to go see. Getting back to our boy, Dr. Satan. He marries a lady named Louise Adelavu. Doesn't last too long. You know, sometimes relationships just don't work out. Mommies and daddies can love one another a lot, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes the pork and turns the chicken. Look at that little hump motion. That mm -hmm. was a that is a thrusting Look motion that. he's doing mm -hmm. in the chair. That is nice. That's, I don't like it. That's a good rhythm. Thank you, buddy. <clears throat> I would already be done. <laughs> <laughs> I felt it. <laughs> that was a w inch and a half thrust right there. <laughs> <laughs> and he's still slipping out. <laughs> you ever have your wife say, give me some more dick? <laughs> oh, man. He's talking to you, Jake. Every day. <laughs> and you got to say, hold on, let me go to the basement real quick. <laughs> but, dude, get this. Uh, the relationship doesn't work out with Dr. Satan and Louise. And uh, she disappears a few months after they're married. Whoa, first victim. Yep. Body was never found. Eventually, it's found. Uh, probably found. So the river sign, a, a um, suitcase is found, and inside the suitcase is a woman's body. It was decomposed so badly that they couldn't tell who it was, but people seem to think it was her body. Uh huh. On top of this, too, her fucking parents' house was burned down. When, when she disappeared, it was burned down? During that time, yeah. Okay. Whoa. Do you know how long it was after she disappeared when the body was found? Was it years? I don't think that long, okay. no. Did she have any, like, wild tattoos or anything, like an identifier? It was Bones. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, she had a uh, Bones television show, Tramp Stamp. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how the show started. <laughs> <laughs> so our boy no longer is uh, held down by a wife. <clears throat> yeah. So he's like free at last. <laughs> so he's like, all right, fuck it. I'm I'm free to fucking move forward with my life. He becomes runs uh, not yet. He runs for mayor of his town. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. Damn. Made his wife disappear, and then he runs for mayor. That is balls. <laughs> I made my wife disappear. <laughs> so this motherfucker's home alone now. And on the day of the election, both he and his opponent are supposed to give speeches in in the middle of town. He gives his speech, and then when it's the opponent's turn to give his speech, now it's night now. The opponent's giving his speech at nighttime. Dr. Satan hires a couple local rabble-rousers to cut all the electricity in the town and then set fire to buildings around where the speech is supposed to be held. Jesus. Whoa. Right. Little dude. bad boy. Little bad boy. He'd fit in great here. <laughs> the mayor's burning his own town. Yep. 
<laughs> what a fucking dumbass. Dude, so that's, the guy, what, that's what Ben Franklin used to do. Burn the he, town? Yeah, he started fire companies and insurance. So he would start burning places down to collect insurance money. Silence do bad. <laughs> was that his pen name? Silence do good was. Yeah. <laughs> What's your pen name? Uh, Mike Reed Little. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, fried your ass. I don't like this podcast anymore. (laughs) (laughs) So this motherfucker ends up becoming mayor. Now, shortly after becoming mayor... His scheme worked. It did work. (laughs) Wow. He gets in a little bit of trouble right after he becomes mayor. Jake, what do you think he does to get him in trouble? Stealing uh, campaign... Office supplies. (laughs) (laughs) Not far off. He steals a drum from the town band. (laughs) Seriously? (laughs) He just likes stealing shit, man. Dude. He wasn't even, like, playing it at night. (laughs) <laughs> that might be how they caught him. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> no, that was my wife. I was hitting it. <laughs> that bitch sounded like a bass. Wait, I thought your wife disappeared. Um, I fuck her dead. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, I was skateboarding in, in uh, my neighborhood, and a guy who was running for some kind of town council uh, paid us all $5 to go rip out his opponent's uh, yard Pubes. signs. <laughs> Make them eat them. <laughs> Did you do it? Yeah. I would like to do that shit. I just hate seeing those things all around. So I would do that for yeah. free. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right. So 1927 rolls around. This motherfucker's 30. Guess what happens again? New wife. He Fall falls in live again. A lovely lady by the name of... Georgette LeBlay. <laughs> Georgette soon to disappear. <laughs> Made a name Beelzebub. <laughs> All right. You nailed the last joke, John. I didn't like that one, though. <laughs> but get this. She's got a wealthy dad. So he may not have been in love. He might have uh, just married this bitch for the pussy and the money and the respect. <clears throat> and wow. the power. Mm-hmm. Fuck. I always forget that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I always thought? You know how at the beginning of Money, Power, Respect, little Kim's like, see, I believe... Like when she gets into that speech about money, power, and respect, uh-huh. that's what I always wanted to say at the end of a job interview when they ask, is there anything else you want to let us know about? <laughs> First you get the never... money, then you get the power, and then you get the respect. And then you get the fettuccine. Ooh. Okay. Was that really in the song? Isn't it? I think that's a weird out meal. version. Spaghetti, fettuccine, and veal. Oh, yeah, that's, that's uh, Diddy's part. Yeah. All right, well, I don't like that part. <laughs> oh, he's turning on me. Fuck. <laughs> I don't like anything you do anymore. That's two in a row. You killed me with that yeah. joke. <laughs> but yeah, he has a baby with this bitch, and they named this motherfucker Gerhart. So you know they don't like this baby right off the bat. Gay? Gayer Hart? Oh, I like that better. Gare? Gare, like G E R. Okay. Gare. Gare. Yeah, it's it was actually Gayer Hart. The baby next to him was Gay Hart. They're like, this kid's got a much gayer heart. Than so you're gonna be Gayer Hart. So they named this little motherfucker Gayer Hart, and uh, Doctor Satan just can't help himself. He's just got to keep stealing. He steals a bunch of oil from the local railroad depot. Whoa! How? <laughs> I don't fucking How know, the man. Fuck is he transporting Listen, oil? When you want to steal, you fucking steal, man. <laughs> you find a way. On top of this shit, too. He's got a mistress. He burns that bitch's house down and she dies in the fire. Damn. Damn. Mm-hmm. Fuck. You ever had pussy so good you burn her house down? Dude, he really knows how to end a relationship. You better answer this question, Jake. <laughs> Jake, have I, you ever had pussy <clears throat> so good you, guys, you burn the house down? You guys saw what happened in Notre Dame, didn't you? No. It burned down. Not the university, the fucking, oh, the cathedral, sure. the real Notre Dame. Um, so you're saying, <sighs> the little boy so, butt was so good. <laughs> <laughs> little French boy butt. I was saying, the pussy was so good. You, I don't know what the you were sucking on that little wee-wee? <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's... Yeah, he killed her. Motherfucker go hunchback in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I go hunch front. <laughs> what are we becoming? I don't know. 
<laughs> Wait, th- this whole time he's so he's now he's stealing oil, he's stealing drums. He's is he still like a doctor doctoring too as the being of the mayor? He's I think mayor is his primary profession. Doctor on the side. But he's not out of the game, yeah. Yeah. So, but here's the deal. Like he gets enough people think that he's responsible for his side bitch's fire that he feels enough pressure to resign as mayor. But does not get arrested for it. He does not get arrested. What the fuck? This Dude, guy's really getting away with a lot. He is. Now, he gets in a little bit more trouble. In 1932, he gets caught doing something. He gets caught stealing electricity. <laughs> <laughs> I, I caught my neighbors doing that before. <laughs> From your house? From our apartment. How shocking was it? You can get mad at me for bad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> now, when he gets caught stealing electricity, he's a part of the city council. So they do not look kindly upon that, and he gets fined for that, and he's basically banished to Paris at this point. He goes to Paris, and he starts fucking dishing out morphine all over the place again. <laughs> getting the whole city high. You be getting some head, getting, getting some head. <laughs> now, he goes back to Paris, and they're like, all right, We've heard bad things about you. We're not going to strip your medical license. However, we don't want you to practice medicine anymore. But the concession we're willing to make is that we will allow you to write death certificates in Paris. Which seems like an odd thing to do for a man who was burned inside bitches' houses down with them in it. Yeah. Well, I guess the the logic is like how much, you know, damage can you do behind a desk? To the pussy? To the pussy. And the desk. The pussy and the desk. If you're fucking on the desk, a lot to both. My drawers are sticky. <laughs> I'll bet they are. <laughs> <laughs> now get this shit. He's trying to win you over now. You notice that? I want yeah. you back. <laughs> I, I, one look at those eyes, man. I can't stay away. He took me down and he's bringing me back up. And it feels good. Oh, uh, you're going to enjoy this, too. He gets in trouble for something else now. He beats up a cop. Oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't picture this guy as a uh, a strong man. Well, here's what happens. The cop catches him shoplifting, and the cop's trying to take him in. He steals every day. Yeah, he loves it, man. <laughs> Dr. Satan's not having it. He's like, yeah, I'm not going to jail. The cop's like, the fuck you aren't. So Dr. Satan beats him up. He appears in court. The judge is like, Dr. Satan, what the fuck, man? <laughs> The way that he describes what happened that day really made me laugh. He describes his behavior and blames it on a quote-unquote funny attack. He he had an attack of the funny. A funny attack, meaning like uh, under stress. Yeah. So he says he's under stress. Temporary funny attack. Yes. God. And the judge is like, what are you so stressed about? And uh, the reason that he gives for being stressed is that he says he's... You're, you're going to want to brace yourself for this, John. Are you ready for this? Yeah. He says the reason why he's so stressed is because he's trying to build a constipation machine, which sucks the poopy out of your asshole. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> 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 Uh, excuse me? You heard me right, dickhead. <laughs> Instead of fiber, he's making machines to dig poop out of your ass? Yeah. He says he is. I don't know if he's actually working on it, but this is what he says to the judge as to what caused his funny attack. That's, I love this guy. He is pretty and cool. as a result, French people are okay in my book now. Thank you. That's all I wanted to hear. <laughs> then I can stop acting like such a baguette. <laughs> the judge is like, why are you so stressed, bro? Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, man. I'm just, I'm working on a machine to pull poop out of butts, and it's not going good. <laughs> and the judge is like, oh, man, all right. Yeah, I'll I can, let you I can feel that. Yeah. yeah, I'm feeling those lighters. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So the judge is like, all right, man, we'll figure this out. He does get locked up for beating up the cop. And in 1937, he gets out. For a couple of years, he's a good boy, but then he gets in a little bit of trouble again for tax evasion. Not a big deal. No. Right? Still a form of stealing, too. Ah, tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> so in 1939, war breaks out. We about to get in to World War II, John. Jake, you're a history man, aren't you? 
A uh, little bit, yeah. Yeah. I remember that night, that so, year. So you've heard of World War II? <clears throat> I, you know, I, I vaguely remember it. Okay. Yeah. I have not heard of it. This is the first. Oh, let me tell you right about now. it. Thank you. This is like the birds and the bees for uh, feminine men. <laughs> 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 a man who's never even heard of war. <laughs> Sometime when a man and a man really hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so in 1940, um, the Germans invade Paris. Yeah. At this point, um, Marcel Petio. I haven't referred to him as that. As that as no, much. you've been no. sticking with. You guys Dr. like Doctor Satan. Satan better. I like Doctor Satan. We'll it go with makes that. me giggle inside every time you say it. So. All right, so Doctor Satan like views this as an opportunity to start murdering more and more people. So he's like, all right. Everybody hates these fucking Nazi fuckers that are roaming around town. He's like, how can I play this to my advantage? He's like, all right, I'm going to help the resistance fight the Gestapo. All right. So at this point, he's like, all right, let me see what I can cook up. He develops a scheme to put out word that he's willing to help people in Paris that are being hunted by the Nazis safe passage to South America if they can produce 25,000 francs which is a French word meaning hot dogs. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you can come to his house and give him 25,000 hot dogs, Jake, he will provide safe passage for you to make your way to South America to avoid capture or killing by the Nazis. That's too hefty a price for me. <laughs> no? Yeah, that means there's going to be 2,000 left by the time I get there. <laughs> <laughs> You think the Nazis would come up to you and be like, all right, let's see your hot dogs. <laughs> uh, I just fucking finished it. <laughs> I, got, I got mustard on my mouth. <laughs> uh, I'm a f I hope this isn't going where I think it's going. Where do you think it's going, John? Does he make these people disappear and, and steal their money? Unfortunately, he does. Oh, no. He's yeah. promising. Damn oh, it. my God. This Mike, is fucking I evil. thought you were going to do this whole, uh, whole, like, just Pivot. redemptive story where he's, like, an I'm inglorious so bastard. sorry, Jake. I'm so, so sorry. I was so excited. I was like, this is this is going to be awesome. Uh, two of the people he killed are kind of funny, though. So they're French armed robbers, and they're wanted by the Nazis because these two, they're actually pimps as well. These two French pimp armed robbers. That's the coolest. <laughs> yeah. They steal a couple of uh, Nazi outfits and go around robbing other Nazis. All right, they're good guys. Pretty That's cool. cool. Yeah, like yeah, Robin yeah. Hoods. Yeah. Pretty cool. Uh, they're kind of hot too, so they're more Robin Hoods. If you know what I'm talking about, Jake. <laughs> oh, you're horny. <laughs> <laughs> so there are two guys that are really being hunted by the Nazis now for making them look foolish on top of being armed robbed. <laughs> 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 These little Robin Hoods. <laughs> God damn it, Robin Wood. That's yeah, good. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's what better you than said. what. Yeah, I'll throw up woods, yeah. Great joke. Thank you. You made it up, not I, Mike. I, I, steal <laughs> steal from a bitch to give to the whore. <laughs> you hear that, little John? Because you're pee-pee. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell people about my small penis. <laughs> <laughs> this is public. <laughs> this is very tough weather for us right now. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, I just want to give a quick uh, vote it's of confidence and a shout out to all my Light Switch Kings out there. We will get through these dark days of winter, and we will be upon that extra meat heat before we even know it. I promise you, brother, stay strong, and uh, yeah, keep keep pressing on your gun to get your pee-pee to come out. It's going to come out. The holiday season, too. Uh, it's tough on everybody. Gun's going to get bigger. Penis mm -hmm. is going to get smaller. But you know, in one week, the days start getting longer again. So It is right. I'm glad you brought up the holiday season being a tough time for us uh, Light Switch Kings. Because the holiday season is tough on those with little dicks and those with dead moms. So, if any of you have little dicks or dead moms or a combination of both, feel free to message us and uh, we'll provide comfort in this uh, time of need for you. How are we providing comfort, Mike? We're going to fly you to their house, Jake. Oh, God, no. <laughs> yeah. I have a family. I can't uh, be away during Christmas. going to miss Christmas again. Please. <laughs> well, you also have a kind heart and you're the best I, man yeah, for this job. I would do it. Thank you, Jake. Honey, I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 1942, more and more body parts start showing up in this fucking river. He's chopping them up, too? Dog, this yeah. motherfucker, he's chopping them up, and he's doing it in his basement as well. Does he kill Dude. any Nazis? Some, yeah, yeah. Right. I will say it is convenient that he is the one to write death certificates, though. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Was he still doing that? He was, yeah. Yeah, so he's just... 
getting them done. He's like, just in case we don't find them, I have them ready. I have a whole stack here. <laughs> now, the Nazis are hot on his tail, so he rebrands himself and starts calling himself Dr. Eugene. I like Dr. Satan better. I do, too. Eugene does not strike me as a French man's name. Dr. Eugene Satanstein. Why don't we That's insane, land on that? Like, as a doctor, you have to take the Hippocratic Oath. If you're Dr. Satan, what oath do you take? The Wish a Motherfucker Wood Oath. <laughs> that's, where, that's where this Robin Hood's from, from the Wish a Motherfucker Woods. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> that's all I wanted to hear, yeah. man. He got one, baby. <laughs> All right, so Dr. Eugene's flying around, being hunted down by the Nazis. Uh, eventually, the Gestapo does catch up to him. They torture him, and they eventually sentence him to prison, and he's in prison for eight months. But from the resistance perspective, he's hailed as a hero. Yeah. Yeah, but they don't know. They don't know, yeah. yeah. They, they don't know that he's got to know yet. <clears throat> it, was the, it was the Gestapo that got him? It was. Are you sure it wasn't uh, Sheriff Nazi Ham? That was good, Jake. Uh, thank you. All right. I'm proud of myself. How long have you not been listening to a word we said? I, I, <laughs> you yeah. be honest, it's been I know the feeling, brother. 30 minutes. I've been, I've been gone. Just <laughs> Dude, I, I will check out for fucking 12 minutes on end on dad meat to get a pun in. <laughs> Dedicated. Committed to the bit. Uh, yeah. Retarded. You could be talking about a dead child. No, I'm thinking about is making a fucking a swimming pun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, David Swimmer. <laughs> got it. Yeah. The person's crying next to you. The motherfucker's got friends in heaven. <laughs> Michael Welps. <laughs> God. All right, I'm going to leave now. <laughs> All right, so we're getting into uh, 1944. On March 11th, 1944, Jacob, neighbors approach police and say, look, there's a really weird smell coming from that fucking house's chimney. Yeesh. The chimney's fucking cooking all hours of the day and night. Oh, Something God. bad is happening in there. What do you think's going on in there? He I don't think he was making a stew. Mm -mm. <laughs> he's burning bodies. That's what he's doing. He's making ew stew. <laughs> <laughs> Does that work? Can you burn a body till it disappears? Well, he... he uh, he chops bodies up and he puts the body parts in the furnace in the basement. Okay. That it's fucked up. It's it's so hard to get rid of it. Like there's there is a picture of this furnace, and like you see how small it is. So it must have taken him for fucking ever like, to get rid of these fucking bodies. So the police come in there. They're now looking for him too. So the Nazis are fucking hate him. The fucking local police hate him. Some of his neighbors hate him, although others still view him as a resistance hero. Really? Yeah. So Man, but that. that was so cool. <laughs> that was pretty, yeah, that was pretty Good wild. job, Mike. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> so those people that still hail him as a hero, they allow him to escape to a different part of France. Is that where he, when he went to the castle and met Belle? <laughs> Jake, it is the 30th anniversary of... A movie that shaped my teenage years. Don't you fucking dare make a joke about it. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry, Mike. I, I just thought maybe. Because he is kind of a beast mm -hmm. in the story. You keep the shit up, man. You're going to be looking in the mirror and see something there that definitely wasn't there before. He got it out. Damn it. <laughs> Close. <laughs> <laughs> Getting your ass beat over a Beauty and the Beast joke on a podcast. Isn't is it? <laughs> Is a tale as old as time, motherfucker. Oh, man. I think my lowest point was almost choking to a death during dad meet that one oh, time. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. That was my lowest point in life. Oh, my God. Yeah. What were you choking on? I just started His dick. fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I was chewing on a dick while they were probably. Um, no, I just fucking. I was laughing so hard I started fucking choking. <laughs> like a dog that gets excited and starts going like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what you were doing. Yeah, that's what I fucking did. And then I was wearing sweatpants and I like, pissed my pants a little bit. They didn't see that, that part. Oh my you know God. That? No. I had no idea what was I, happening. Was like, beep, beep, beep. Because I see him over there laughing. And then the next <sighs> minute, yeah. he's like it, making Eddie Murphy sounds. Oh, uh, yeah, I was. I was doing some clumps noises. Yeah, he was clumping up. <laughs> yeah, I was clumping. Are you clumping? Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, the fucking live chat is going off like, look at this fat idiot. And I'm like, because that was all the time. Reading all the yeah. hurtful comments. <laughs> I'm not joking. Die. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> Dude, it was so humiliating. But Jake got up and he walked toward the door and then he eventually started breathing again. <laughs> Jesus, and then how did you, I think it was was it your daughter who screenshot it the next day and posted uh, it. Yeah, and it fucking, I just see it was our reactions, me and Tim's reactions. Yeah, and it was just Tim's cracking up, and Mike's just like, "Don't fucking die in my house." I, I <laughs> well, did not Tommy know what was happening. Tommy is the only one who had genuine concern. I'm like, "All right, okay, I see, I see who my boys are." <laughs> <laughs> I, ge- I genuinely did not know. It's taped some- to my I didn't bathroom know if mirror. something was wrong or not. I have it taped to my bathroom mirror every day. I look at it and I jerk oh my off. God. To the screenshot of them reacting. To yes, to me, it was dying. Potential death. Yeah, you jerk off to it. Yeah, you know? you're a weird guy, Ace. <laughs> uh, how did you clear your airway? Like, what was, dude? Just the issue. I, just fat got in the way. You know. So you had to spit it up. Yeah, usually it, you, <laughs> spit up some fat. Usually it happens. <laughs> spit up a lot of fat that night. Yeah, believe it or not, it was still there after the fat. I had but, to put uh, him over my shoulder, and I was yeah. smacking the fat out of his throat. <laughs> yeah, I uh, no, I fucking. It usually happens when I sleep. This is before I had the CPAP thing. Yeah, and, he had uh, wake apnea. Yeah, dude, that's how bad it got. <laughs> but you know, been working on it. We'll yeah. See you out there, brother. See, yeah. Fuck. See you rowing, dog. Are you pumping? I'm, I'm pumping. Keep rowing, What's that rowing, called? rowing, rowing. Erg rowing. machine? Is that an erg? Uh, nah, you wouldn't know an erg if it fucking <laughs> slapped you across your fat ass with a fat dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how to take that, but I do think I would know that. I think, that yeah, you erg. would pull your cheeks apart and take it. I think you know exactly what to do. Yeah. I still treated Danny's chair like it was a tower of terror, though, so I've got some work to do. Like a baby bird learning how to eat. <laughs> <laughs> me again? Yeah, I'm still on you, bitch. <laughs> I was trying to get it off you, John. I was trying to... Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so Dr. Satan's on the run. Uh-huh. And he's being hidden by all these people in town who still view him as a resistance hero. Someone hooks him up now with a job at the French Forces of the Interior. He renames himself. What do you think he calls himself? And he's not Dr. He's Dr. Eugene currently. He was. But when he goes to the French forces of the interior he's to back. apply for this position, he rebrands himself as a gentleman by the name of Henri Valéry. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? I like it. I do like it, too. <laughs> and he's able to uh, produce fake documentation, which shows that he has a background in the military, which he does, but he, he drums it up to be more than it actually uh-huh. was. And uh, he has the... Uh, law enforcement background now and he's eventually gets this post and his job primarily is to invest is to uh, interrogate Nazis that's cool yeah it is pretty cool and it's especially cool if it's a fucking made up job and dude it's somebody who's already like killed people innocent people so it's like he has the skills mm-hmm. why would you have to lie on your resume for that well because you just can't be a fucking a bread baker interrogating yeah. Nazis. I mean, I think you can. I think if you've got a body count, you'd be like, look, between you and me, I've killed like 100 people. Mm-hmm. Can I, you know, let me get this. Yeah, you might be known as the yeast of Bergen Belsen. <laughs> the yeast of burden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you get this? So, in addition to interrogating Nazis, Henri Valéry is hired to look for the escaped Dr. Satan. That's awesome. Looking this motherfucker's for looking for himself. That rule. Yeah, he's hired to look for himself. Dude, when you said that Dr. Satan was on the run, I was like, that has to be the funniest run. <laughs> like, a French doctor. Just leaving trail marks in the dirt the entire <laughs> yeah. way. From tree to tree. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a little fucking deer in a fucking musical. But unfortunately, this post doesn't last too long. So he escapes in March gets the job, and by Halloween 1944, he's captured at a train station. As Henri Valéry, not Dr. Satan at this point. No, they catch up to him as Dr. Satan. Oh, okay, Satan. okay. It wasn't like he tried to catch himself in the mirror. It's like, I found him! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, can I get the reward now, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they arrest him mm-hmm. because they've been looking into these house, the murders at his house the entire time, and they know he killed a ton of people. The exact number, it'll never be pinned down. But to get him to court, they find enough remains to piece it together to charge him with 27 separate murders. I was going to say 30. 
Oh. But I didn't, so you don't yeah, believe Was that a kid. pun you did there? It wasn't, but it could have worked. Yeah. 27. They're piecing it together. Yeah, he said enough remains that they pieced it together. <laughs> what was he dressed as? What do you mean? You said he got arrested on Halloween. Ooh. I want to know what... An actual I'm, skeleton. <laughs> People's bones <laughs> taped to a black I just had. I just put on whatever was lying around the house. <laughs> Laundry day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? What were the, all those remains doing in your house? They were doing the mesh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was kind of a graveyard smash. <laughs> so he's charged Jake with 27 fucking murders, in addition to financial crimes, which tallied 200 million. Dude. That he was charged with stealing. Did uh, did all the shit catch up with him? The oil and like two hundred million. I think the oil fucking... was separate from this because well, I think what they factored in was like him, um, him uh, fucking tricking people into giving him the twenty five yeah. thousand hot dogs to, for safe passage to South America. Did he murder every single person that paid him that money? I don't fucking know, man. You oh think, my god, that's yeah. a reasonable question. He's burning all those remains, and it smells terrible. But he's had his rooms full of hot dogs. It is. So you think it might smell good? Mm, my God, imagine that. <laughs> a room full of... Burning hot dogs all night. Now, I think he's trying to curry favor with with the community again mm -hmm. because he does admit to killing 63 Nazis. I don't believe it. I don't either, man. Doesn't matter. He's convicted of the 27 murders that he's charged with, and he is sentenced to die. And the way that they'd be killing motherfuckers back then over there... Execution, uh, firing squad, probably right. Beheading. Whoa! Whoa! The French were fucking real for a minute. Dude. Mm -hmm. Wait, I thought the revolution already happened. So, like, they still did it then. Jake, I thought they stopped when the end of fucking Tale of Two Cities ended. Jake, he can't read, man. <laughs> <laughs> they cut his fucking head off. Jesus That's Christ! That's awesome. Now, this was something that I found odd because apparently, like, when you were about to be executed. They offered you a glass of rum and a cigarette. He declined the rum. I'd rather have wine. He's like, I've been sober. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like a chip. There before the grace of God goes my head. <laughs> so, yeah, on um, May 25th, 1946, Dr. Satan is beheaded, but I truly believe he died of a broken heart. After that, he became the headless horseman. He's like, no, he he died when his head was detached from his body. And now every I Halloween in that, France, little kids can look under their pillows and find more feet. That's got to be so hard at beheadings back then. When the head gets cut off, <laughs> not to kick it around. Oh, uh, dude. Was that public? Do you know? Um, nah, I don't think, dude, I, I think more people are jumping out of the way of the head. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it rolls near your leg, like, oh god, not my pantaloons. <laughs> like you just jump I don't want to break the stage, but you know. Can you guys hold it down for a second while I get another soda pop? I'm a, These are I'm a really going down. down smooth. Do y'all want a soda? Are they cold? Nah, I'm good. Uh, no. No, I don't. Thank you though. No, Jake, I, I'm, I'm okay, thank you. I, I hey, anybody listening, you want a soda? You Michael Fenn, you one. Oh, look at that. Man. Is guillotine a French word? Yeah, it is. For head chopper. <laughs> <laughs> Would you ever take a, a Muzzy class and, and learn how to speak French? Uh, Muzzy is the first non-binary person, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> and if you can't tell if a person is a man or a woman, they're a Muzzy. <laughs> That's not French. They're speaking. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I would not. I'd never had the opportunity to take a Muzzy class, but I would. Yeah. What did I miss about Muzzies? Do you remember I don't like Muzzy? the sound of this. You remember Muzzy? What that do? He's a language monster. <laughs> That's correct. There was a right? commercial. Yeah, it was like there was a commercial with some like kid going like, "Voi, toi, tu, dash," and the, the, <laughs> this lady with red hair would come out and be like, "That's not fr or, that's not English they're speaking. That's French." I don't, think you, I don't think you were speaking French, honestly. Yeah, I, don't, I guess I forget the commercial. That was made up. Parlez-vous en français? There we Are go. Are you French? Oui. Wait, Je? Are you reading the commercial right now? Je suis. Is Muzzy here? Muzzy? <laughs> hey, guys. Who wants to learn a language? That's Muzzy, you just sound like Cookie Monster. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> All right. You don't remember Muzzy commercials? I have no idea. 
I'm too busy watching fucking Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like a beast. He was like a little gritty back before gritty. Yeah, I have pre- no recollection of this. Yeah. Really? You guys are like seven years younger than me, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, feel like it was like uh, maybe when I was ten years old, it was a commercial. Like when you watch cartoons, was it in black and white? Brother, I was learning my ABCs while your daddies were still spilling their seeds. <laughs> <laughs> he just has all these stock age lines. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I have no recollection of Muzzy. Well, we'll school you. All right. Maybe we could learn French together nah. from Muzzy. That's, uh, that's got to be a bad word. I think that he got taken off the air for a reason. <laughs> he was yeah. part of the Me Too movement. <laughs> hey, kids, it's Muzzy, the jerker in the burka. <laughs> that guy, right? That was Mike doing that impression. I just want to clarify. <laughs> if you only listen, that was Mike doing the impression. Mm, sounded like Jake to me. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, that was not that was not a muzzy line. Okay, <laughs> you're confusing muzzy with somebody else. <laughs> Who did y'all like as children? On the television? No, at your fucking school. Yes, <laughs> it it wasn't a clear question. <laughs> I'll let Jake take this one. Man, I I'm trying to figure out how vulnerable I should be right uh, now. Ah, hit us with a firm. This is a safe space. Uh, no, it's not. It's I take not. back everything I've ever said tonight that was mean. There was a, there was like a show I watched long after I shouldn't have been watching it. Uh, what was it, Law and Order Out? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was Law and Order Out. <laughs> I, I, Fat I, child. I wasn't into, yeah, I got it. I was a skinny child. It wasn't until I discovered Oreos that I fucking... <laughs> well, I was a fat child for both of us, Jake. Were you? Yeah, I was a fat boy. Oh, man. I would have made so much fun of you. Brother, I used to watch TGIF, and I would lay on the floor. My Aunt Patsy, who left me five grand once. Thank God it's fat. <laughs> <laughs> she she would buy me a pound of Virginia baked ham, and I would also get hot cabagola, too. And I would lay on the floor. Mike, I appreciate how you said hammed in the past tense. <laughs> Virginia Bake hammed. Got pretty hammed up last week. <laughs> I would lay on the floor getting hammed up. And I would I would lay with my hand in my ear and just peel off slices of lunch meat like they were fucking potato chips while I watched TGIF. <laughs> and pretended that some of those ladies were my girlfriends. Who? I, <laughs> I liked the girls from Just the Ten of Us. Uh, I liked... um was that on TGIF? No, no, it wasn't. It was not on TGIF. No, it was. Just the Ten of Us was an ABC show on Friday nights. I don't know. I'm I think it was before T- TGIF. Yeah. Step by step. That was TGIF. The uh, dark haired lady. Karen. I don't remember her name. Al was the middle one, I think. She was hot. I liked her. Hmm. Um, I mean, let's be honest, though. Cody was the one getting me hard back then. He had beautiful <laughs> hair, man. Well, he was like a legit kickboxer, right? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Ask his yeah. first wife. Yeah, that's what I was going to bring up, too. <laughs> I knew he was knocking out that pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not besmirch the man who played Cody right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I like some of those girls. Um, just sitting there, just eating ham, mm-hmm. just watching step by step. Wishing you could share a slice of ham with them. Your aunt Pat walks in. <laughs> she's like, Michael, <laughs> are you eating all the ham? She would never yell at me, Jake. She uh, kept me fat. Michael, where's my meat? ham? Like that? Like more? You no, know? I could eat whatever curious? I wanted. You would do the whole pound over the two hour, brother. I would eat even more. Dude. And Patsy would make me all kinds of Italian treats. That's not a, a, a treat. That's just ham. <laughs> 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 that's just ham. He's right. Yeah. Would you care for a snack? Yeah, I would like a pound of ham. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slice it thick. <laughs> just one four inch <laughs> slice of ham. <laughs> I'm eating like a sandwich. <laughs> Yeah, that was borderline child abuse. <laughs> man. I was so fat and out of shape. Man. How fat were you? Weight-wise, I don't know, but I what was- size f- pants? Let's go there. Husky. Yeah. I don't know uh, what specific side, but they were definitely husky You pants. were going to a specific section of the store. I would go to <laughs> Sears Husky. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom was insistent that I wasn't the size that I was, so my pants were always tight as shit. Oh, no. 
Yeah, so it's like my little ass Metis was pressed to the side. <laughs> Damn. And I every night, like, I would get over from school and I would take my pants off and I would have red marks around my waistband from my pants being. Do you think tight. your mom constricted your bird so much? <gasps> like an Asian culture? She's why it's not big. That's right. It could be. She bounded up your penis. Whoa, I don't like this, Jake. Well, this you is to, you have to come to terms with it. It's what happened. That fucking bitch. <laughs> Do you think maybe she took my bird away because God eventually... Maybe that's why God took her ass away. It was like an eye for an eye. Yeah. A dick for an ass. <laughs> <laughs> Can't slip anything past you. You'd make a great detective. <laughs> you keep saying that. I don't think I would. <laughs> a pound of booty flesh. No more, no less. <laughs> Where's the detective on this case? Oh, he's out back getting himself high. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get high as fuck before I think about this crime. <laughs> You're like one of the fucking CSI guy. Just as soon as you walk into the crime scene, you put on the sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. Said anything. <laughs> yeah. Looks like somebody had an all you can eat pussy buffet. <laughs> John, you are in the bathroom by yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. John, were you ever a little fat boy? Um, not too fat as mm -hmm. a boy. I'm, f I'm, I'm a fat. Better man than I was a boy, I think. Mm. Yeah, he's a little new chubby. to the club. Yeah, you're, you're new to the club. Yeah. Well, decade I'm in, a five year vet. I'll give you a decade. I've known you for a decade. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> I've only been an XL for five years. Really? I think I was a large one. Man, man. who's dressing no, you? you? Mike's right. mom. <laughs> god damn it! A couple of little sausages walking around. <laughs> <Wait> <laughs> <in that case. laughs> you were still thin. Like the first time I remember. Really interacting with you was on the set of Delco Proper. We were throwing a football around. That was 2017. I was still wearing larges. Yeah, that was five years ago. Yeah, yeah. All downhill from there. That's like when I quit my uh, serving job, and I haven't had a real job since. Uh, you know, I would walk a lot during a shift, so uh -huh. I kept off some of the weight. And wow. I just, I've been on the couch for the last five years, dude. I remember yeah. you coming over, packing it on. I remember you going to open Mike. Like, yeah, I just quit my serving job. I'm like, he's gonna need it. <laughs> Fuck. He's gonna need that back right now. Stat. I did actually yeah. go back for a couple months and then they I fired remember. Me. Yeah. Yeah. It was, a, it was a great bit on their end. Because <laughs> yeah. you, you used to have to take the train. You would always take the train mm -hmm. to and from. For like four years. Yeah. And I think I that's passed what, a thousand yeah. restaurants to get to a restaurant. Yeah. It's in, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But they let me do whatever I wanted for a long time. So hmm. used to get pretty drunk. But look at you now. Still getting pretty drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 40 pounds heavier. I will say this, though. You're so handsome that you don't miss a beat sexually. <laughs> oh. All right. <laughs> you just raised my body temperature with that. <laughs> I'm sweating a little bit. He raised mine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't miss a beat sexually. I'm going to. What does that let mean? My wife know that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta put that in the bio. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, time to meet the sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them out, Tia and Tamara. <laughs> Jake, left or right, Tia or Tamara? Uh, Tia is the left. Tamara like you would, is the like right. you would read it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like it would appear on a like page. The and my penis is a smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> Did a little Taj Maori. <laughs> Smart guy. You officially have the best nickname genitalia <laughs> out of everyone I know. <laughs> you peen. <laughs> oh my god, Jake, that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, baby, you trying to meet Taj to get in? <laughs> I'm trying to show you the whole cast, girl. <laughs> I'm about to put the F in TGI. Disney, different. What? This is Disney, right? Ah, uh, uh, yeah, 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 fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody makes mistakes. Actually, I think, wasn't, wasn't, it, wasn't it on Warner Brother? Um, WB? Yeah, but I feel like it was, uh, wasn't Smart Guy on Disney? Was it not? It may have moved to Disney. I feel like it did. When WB went down. But they're all the same entity now, yeah. so. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> uh, ABC. Oh, okay. Disney. All right, yeah. They're all. He just heard titty. <laughs> <laughs> he heard N titty. 
<laughs> I thought you were talking about the sisters. It's my favorite subreddit. <laughs> Hey Siri, bring up entity. <laughs> I'm sorry. You heard me, bitch. I still can't believe they chopped that fucking guy's head off. Yeah. At the end of World War II, they were still chopping fucking yeah. heads off. That's what so I literally thought they stopped. <laughs> yeah, I thought they gave it up for Lent. <laughs> you gonna give up anything for Lent this year, guys? Mm, probably not. Yeah, I've given up enough. No. <laughs> yeah, I've given up enough. I could afford to hang on to some things. You you went? Did you not have any sugar today either? You had no. No, sugar I yesterday? went. I, I'm drinking a cheer wine right oh. now. Yeah. I'm sorry, I ruined that for you. No, no, no. I, I I had something earlier too. I went a little. I celebrated a little too hard. What'd you have, Jake? Um, I don't want to get into it. I had a quesadilla thing that I was telling you about. Okay. And then we had a holiday party at work. Well, you didn't add any sugar to that quesadilla, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Just poured it on. <laughs> you know the sugar I keep in my glove compartment? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then just, yeah, had cold meatballs, and marinara sauce. Never heated up properly. Mm. Six coffees with cream in it. Yeah, a ton of stuff. I was like, I had no sugar yesterday, so I can do this. So I'll get back on it tomorrow. Well, there's still yeah. there's no sugar, right? Yeah, for one entire day. Yeah, that's good, man. Yeah. But that's the only thing you've had with sugar, the soda. That's a dub, brother. Oh no, no, like I mean, I yeah, I've, I, everything has sugar. That's what's crazy. Everything has added sugar. Did you meatballs? Count? Yeah, yeah, the sauce. sauce. Damn, dude, can't escape it. You yeah. mean the gravy, Jake? <laughs> yeah. Now, as far as sugar, did you count all the kisses under the mistletoe? <laughs> I made a joke at work at work today about my pants falling down because mm -hmm. my belt's loose, and they're like, "Oh, so they're like, oh shit, that's Taj Maori." <laughs> <laughs> and I referred to my nuts. I referred to my whole package as I said, everyone in the office would mistake it for mistletoe. <laughs> Wait, let me back up a minute. Like your pants fell down at work? No, no, no. I said I was con. I, I was like self conscious about my belt falling down because like it's it's. Big enough, but there's not enough holes for it to be tight enough. Oh, brother, convert the suspenders. Ah, oh, come on, I'm not fucking doing that. You could get You're trying to get suspenders. me to do that on the camera. I'm not doing that. Looking like the colonel. <laughs> <laughs> go from private to colonel. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you were gonna go there. Yeah. <laughs> so you nicknamed your uh, your privates twice today. Yeah. You're having a big day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. My, my genitals are having an identity crisis. <laughs> oh, my God. I just thought of this. Um, I was thinking about Beauty and the Beast again. <laughs> but I used to work at a school where this one man-child, I say man-child because... He was held back a couple times? Um, <laughs> no, I he was a man-child because he was gigantic, and I don't even know how fucking old this kid was. Probably 16, 17, I don't know. Just a massive human being, violent, just a real, real problem at work. And uh, the only thing that would calm him down was Beauty and the Beast. Whether it was a Beauty and the Beast action figure, uh, watching a little bit of Beauty and the Beast, it's the only fucking thing that would calm him down. That was not uh, what I expected. Mike, were you this man child? <laughs> no, I was not. <laughs> Did you bond on that? Dude, no. <laughs> I didn't bring it up. I, I wanted nothing to do with, 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 with this gentleman. You beating him ham. <laughs> But dude, his parents were um, using this reward of going to see the Beauty and the Beast live show as an incentive for him to behave properly at school. And for a while it worked. Until they took him to the show, he thought they were going to a showing of the movie Beauty and the Beast. And when he saw it was an actual play, he lost his shit. Oh. And this old black dude that I worked with, God, I miss him, Larry. When my boss said that uh, it did not go well at the Beauty and the Beast live show because we had an end of the day meeting, and somebody's like, "Oh, how did so and so's uh, Beauty and the Beast show go?" She's like, uh, "I received an email from his mother. It did not go well." And everybody goes, "Oh!" And then this older black gentleman that I work with named Larry, as a, as like the awe is quiet down, Larry goes, "Damn!" Took the beauty to the show and he came back the beast. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bear, Larry, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Did he um, ruin the performance for everyone? Probably, in the man. Yeah, he was being a real beast. <laughs> man. They had to get Lumiere to take him out and everything. <laughs> <laughs> the fire scared him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they probably should have known that. 
but he should have known that they didn't just re-release a theatrical version of Beauty and the Beast for no reason. Brother, he was special. He should have known, Mike. All right. <laughs> they should all know that. You, should, should, you should write a book on special needs code. They should know. <laughs> they, should. they know better. <laughs> they know. They're just fucking pretending not to get it. <laughs> Does your son have Faker syndrome? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen a live show of Beauty and the Beast like that kid did? No, what did I see live? I had a theater hookup for a while, and I used to get tickets to all kinds of shit. I saw Peter Pan. I saw Book of Mormon. I might have seen Nutcracker. <laughs> Sir, you can bring deli meats in here. <laughs> <laughs> These are my service deli meats. <laughs> Put a little vest on the lunch meat package. <laughs> That's awesome. I would like it. I like going anywhere where I can sit and just be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that anywhere you want. And you don't fish. Nah, I don't like hurting things. You just fucking throw a, a line in the water with nothing on it. <laughs> so says a guy whose dick name is Taj. <laughs> it's Mr. Maori to you, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to talk to Mr. Maori in that case. <laughs> <laughs> on your wedding day, did the back of your car say just maori <laughs> Dragging a bunch of empty tuna cans. <laughs> <laughs> Certified toad. <laughs> Ooh, we gone stupid now. <laughs> we got the we got a case of the funnies. <laughs> we got a case of the Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Do you guys ever go back and watch some of those shows that you loved as as uh, youngsters? I put on like the X Men cartoon a mm -hmm. couple months ago. How'd you like that? Ah, I switched back to Entourage pretty quickly. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm on season four of Entourage on my rewatch. Late in the year, I know. Whoa! But uh, it's uh, gonna happen. It's happening. You know what? Late in the year is a good time to go back and rewatch shows you loved. Yeah. Well, I got to do it yearly. I just have to. Yeah. Just something I have to do. I still got to finish Entourage. I don't think you're going to at this point. I will. Don't you just gotta, doubt me. Just got to leave it in the background, you know? Yeah. Actually, for your first viewing, you should be paying, paying a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. Lock your phone up. <laughs> <laughs> Yonder pouch. Yeah. Furman, what about you? Uh, well, right now, yeah, because I'm showing my kid a lot of stuff. I'm not doing that thing where, like, I know you hate it, where you force the shit on the kid. I'm not doing that. I'm just like... Mm -hmm. Look at it. If you like it, we'll keep watching. If not, we'll move on. Like Disney shit, DuckTales and that kind of like, stuff? Yeah, even old, like uh, real Ghostbusters. I that love that. Yeah, so that, um, Ninja Turtles. Um, Is that got go Duck Ghostbusters, that intro? With like the, uh, there was an ape, there was like a ghost car. You know, I skipped the intro. Or is it the Venkman? I think it's the Venkman version. one. Yeah, the okay. Venkman version. Um, but yeah, so I've been watching a ton of that stuff. Showing them dinosaurs. He's into it? Yeah, he, I mean, he's not like, like he'll watch it a couple episodes and then he'll, he'll be ready to move on. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. But he's not making you switch to like some weird YouTube guy or anything, right? No, I mean, he does, but like not all the time. And that sucks. I mean, you sh you can you can just pretend it doesn't exist, right? Until they go to school and they hear about it from other people. Yeah, a lot of people do that. I yeah. wish I had known to do that prior. Yeah, he discovered this one blippy. Oh, that's God. what I was about to say. Fucking weirdo, dude. Yeah, but now he he's like, with the orange glasses. Yeah, he's got like an empire. Yeah, he creeps me the fuck out. Yeah. Hey, kids, I want you to take your socks off and throw them at the screen, dude, and yeah. on the count of three, I'm gonna smell them. One, two, <laughs> <laughs> throw them again. <laughs> he could be a stinker. He had a video come out that almost like ruined his empire. What? Of like him and like sh involving him and shit. <laughs> like he was like trying to be like a, a bad boy back in the day and it didn't pan out. So then he turned into a to like a, a creep, dude. Mm -hmm. He just goes to like the way it started is like somebody with an iPhone would take like go to a park and he would just be like, Hey kids, <laughs> let's go down the slide and he just like talks like a kid. Yeah. And he like makes the noises like a kid. That's and not that's, how kids talk, by the way. Yeah. Right. Like he's like but he's like the whole time he's going, <laughs> and you're like, What the dude, you're a fucking grown man. Can yeah. you not make those fucking weird noises. I do like hearing you make them, though. Stop it. Yeah. 
I'm like one of those dog him. toys. <laughs> you just bite and just fucking. I'm gonna put some peanut butter in you and call you a Kong, brother. I mean, he's got to be a millionaire. Would you oh, yeah. sell your soul and be a children's show creep to make a million dollars? You know, they make a lot of money, and he's got swagger too. Like he's he, tr- getting mad he tried to introduce like his own like ju- like they weren't. <laughs> he makes those same noises. So. <laughs> he had like customized like Air Force Ones that he was wearing on the show oh, that man. were blippy colors, and now he's passed it on to an Asian dude to be blippy, and it's weird because like like my kid didn't notice. A lot of people don't notice. That guy's probably making a fortune cookie. <laughs> and he's got a he's got a female version now too called Minka. Yeah, I've seen her. She's like she was in a, a partner kind of thing, and now she's got a spinoff. Mm-hmm. Should have named her Yappy. Why? <laughs> tell us why. Don't don't tell us why. Don't, don't tell don't. us why. <laughs> I'm enjoying my soda. Yeah, he's he's got a whole empire, man. You know what I always thought about DuckTales? I always thought that when Scrooge McDuck dived headfirst into that golden pool, he should have been paralyzed. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's not how cartoon coins work, Mike. Life is like a... Oh, stop the music, stop the music. (laughs) (laughs) He's really hurt. (laughs) That's the ambulance. (laughs) (laughs) So Blippi got taken over Uh by... An Asian guy. Not taking over. I think he passed it on. Switched so, it. So out. he's not doing the work anymore. Now he's like collecting, he's franchising it. Yes. Mm. Which but is, did he step out because of the uh, the heat he got? You know, I don't think so. I think he was just like, I'm tired of walking Acting around like play a centers. Complete dipshit on fucking camera yeah, every day. It it was it's I mean, you've seen the stuff we do. It's embarrassing. Dude, I equate it to like to work up the nerve to do that kind of shit on camera has to be like what it feels like the first time you like beg for money. Mm-hmm. Like it has to be the most gut wrenching fucking feeling. Yeah. But then I imagine you get used to it, and once you get that check, baby, whew. brother, yeah. podcasting's not far off. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't feel embarrassed. I'm more. You should. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Every day. All right, I am. Yeah. I don't look into a mirror anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> I turned on the mirrors in my house around. But <laughs> yeah, I remember. I, th- I think it was like the very f- first podcast. Um, no, not the first one I did. I used to do a podcast years ago called Rainy Sundays. Yeah, and uh, I started off thinking about dad me, but now that I'm on Rainy Sundays, I'll talk about this. But I was always afraid to ask the guy who produced the show how many people listen. And I finally did one day because he used to do it live. He's like, all right, it looks like we had 42 people listening. And I was like, oh, my God, 40 people, 42 people fucking listen to this. In a good way. Yes. Yeah. I thought it was going yeah. out to nobody. Well, I mean, it was. <laughs> <laughs> if your wife told you she fucked 42 guys, would that be nobody? <laughs> Damn. All right, I got to go home and talk to my wife. <laughs> that didn't make me feel good. <laughs> It was all 42 of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Were you getting banged up rainy Sundays <laughs> by all the listeners? <laughs> now look at us. 43 listeners. <laughs> and here we and here we go. <laughs> the 41. <laughs> 37. All right. All right, guys. Uh, yeah. You guys like DuckTales? We'll talk about that again. <laughs> is oh. there also a person called Bluey and Blippy? Is Bluey a cartoon? Bluey's a cartoon dog. Okay. An Australian cartoon. He's actually, or she's actually fun. Bluey, Bluey's the name of Jake's hemorrhoid. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever have hemorrhoids? No. Believe it oh, or not. yeah. If I have had them, I didn't know. Yeah. What? Yeah, I I said what I said. If I've no, I, I get I, that. Would I be think in pain? You would know. I, I said I think I had them once. Okay. What, dude? It did. It, That's it, it. Yeah. Why do I look like I have them? How a lot? often do you have them? I think I live with them. <laughs> <laughs> they paint rent on his cheeks. <laughs> You're gonna be fucking doing hemorrhoid commercials. Just. I mean, I I. I'm a I'm a proud buyer of Preparation H, that's for sure. I've mm. gone through a few tubes in my life, I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I know I've gotten a new chair, you know why, but maybe we get you something where you're just kind of a nice donut. ass up. <laughs> just a pile of inner tubes. <laughs> Leaning forward, <laughs> ass up like you're laying on a bed. <laughs> a pile of inner tubes. I, yes. Um, 
Why are we talking about my hemorrhoids now? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. But when I used to work at a bingo hall, like uh, so many of the old ladies would come in and they would have donuts that they would sit on. And when I was like, really flaunting it. Yeah. And I asked somebody, I was like, why are these old ladies sitting on these things? And whoever I asked said, it's because they have hemorrhoids. And I was like, stay the fuck home, you pig. <laughs> It's like not it was herpes. contagious. I know, but it's like if you got to go through all those theatrics just to fucking dot a fucking piece of paper. Buddy, they die for the fucking bingo. You know, I know, that. I know, I know they live by it. I just had to double check, but that's crazy. You said that you mentioned that because Bluey, one of I think Bluey's sister's named Bingo. Jesus, look at that. Mm. You guys should watch it. It's really good. I mean, I have to now. It's full circle. It's sweet. It's fate. <laughs> you think you you. Yeah, I believe it or not, I, and I, I do my sit. I think that you have just always had hemorrhoids, and that's been status quo for you, so you <laughs> don't could, know anything dude, different. It could be. It could. I mean, I also, maybe before I get hemorrhoids, I break the chair so that I don't, you know, then I get a new cushion and I'm fine. What? <laughs> if I break, yeah, no, this makes sense, logically. Are you talking about Bust getting down hemorrhoids from sitting on your asshole? Yeah, isn't that how it happens? From sitting uh, too long. No. Yeah, it's, you can get them. Yeah, I heard it that. Can, but That's it's what mostly I heard. Yeah. dietary. That. What? Yes. No. I mean, I, no. If yes, if, if it was dietary, I am a hemorrhoid. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's no no because I'm not in pain. John, I, it, I, you're not always painful. Am I wincing? <laughs> <laughs> you look relaxed. Dog, I eat like a retarded raccoon. I think you. And I think I've had only them. had hemorrhoids once. I think they were hemorrhoids. How do you not know, Mike? Just my my asshole in the area around it hurt. I didn't know. I refuse. Did you feel anything down there? I did. Yeah. Inflamed. That was hemorrhoids. <laughs> okay. But I'm all better now. That was only one time. Yeah. And you eat pretty much like me a lot. Yeah. Dude, I I got them one time. How is this possible? How do? We, uh, do apparently, if you're not breathing right while you're lifting heavy, it can cause hemorrhoids. I believe it. Oh shit. That makes sense. That that adds up. You gotta breathe through your butt. Yeah, I did not <laughs> breathe through my butt. I mean, I you know I grew up next to a refinery, so maybe that kind of gave me some sh superhuman you asshole. Know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like I have a mutated asshole. Sphincter man. Yeah, killed some brain cells, but tough <laughs> asshole. <laughs> the toughest asshole this side of the Delaware. I wonder how many people are listening at this point. I don't think anyone. They, <laughs> they bailed. I would like to talk about a few murders real quick if you guys want to. A few. A few murders? murders. Yeah. Have you guys been keeping up with the Idaho murders? I have not seen anything since Gabby the last time we Petito? were together. No, dickhead. Dog, that was like 2021 news. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not up to snuff on... Johnny got a fucking baked potato right next to you. <laughs> Talking about old crimes. With my jacket, I'd say masked potato. <laughs> uh, that was a good Jake. <laughs> that is good. Um, what's the latest on the Idaho? Nothing, man. Nothing new. Nothing happened. So is that the one you said the stabbing? Like they, they came down the hill, killed a couple people. Yeah, man. Four people were stabbed to death at the University of Idaho. And there was two people on the first floor that just went up. Yeah, like man. The, that's nuts. And uh, the most recent development was that police are looking for a white Hyundai Elantra which was seen in the area of the crimes and drove past a gas station. Now, the cops had no idea this car was in the vicinity, but it was just a lady that was working an overnight shift at a local gas station was like, let me look at the... She took the lead on it? Dude, insane. God, and I, Like, what Jesus the fuck? Christ. I don't know how they the don't... The convenience store lady is I breaking know. the case? I know, dude. How do you not get the footage from any business in that fucking area? Yeah, but every road. Brother, the overnight lady at the fucking gas station was like, all right, I got time to kill overnight. I'm going to go back and watch all the footage from that night, from the time where the murder supposedly happened. Yeah. And she saw a white Hyundai Elantra drive past, and police had just put out, like, a, a fucking bulletin for it a few days prior. Wow. Dude, I think you guys are a little hard on detectives, if I'm being honest. Oh, they don't call them dicks for nothing. I think you're a little hard on, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was good. Yeah, that don't, was. Touch, don't touch me. <laughs> don't talk about Tosh. What, John, wet your finger and wipe his glasses. No, don't don't you <laughs> dare. Stay away from fucking glasses. I um I don't know, man. I like if I was a detective, dude, you guys would be screaming at me nonstop. Yeah, I'm the if bad you cop. Were fucking bungling everything up. Oh man. Did like did you get a, did you look at the evidence? I'm like, yep, looked at it. 
nothing there. But then you just look at my computer screen. It's just all fantasy football tabs open up, and I'm just. <laughs> yeah. Did you make the playoffs? Oh, I did. Yeah. Good for you. Second, second place so far. Yeah. Should have had you running my squad. <laughs> yeah. There's an interesting story about uh, the Delphi murders today, too. Really? Now, it's from a tabloid called the Daily Mail, so I would take it with a grain of salt. However, I thought that was a reliable news source. Cause it's for some things, it is. like they, they pay a lot of money for information, and sometimes they get good stuff. Sometimes they just okay. put out junk. But what they wrote about today seems like a plausible scenario for how it all went down. So in the article that they published today, they said a source told them that the guy that's been arrested, he's the murderer. However, he was in cahoots with two other guys. The one guy was the dude who's in jail for child poor right now, Kagan Klein. And the other guy was the landowner who owned the space where they were found. The property that we were on. Yep. This article says that the plan was, all three of them were in cahoots together. The plan was to kidnap them and force them onto his property and into his house where they were going to be used as sex slaves. Like trying to get into like trafficking? And yes. Like wow. So the plan was for them to be trafficked. However, something happened, and then the guy who's in jail right now ended up murdering them right then and there. And the landowner had a, uh, he like flip-flopped on his story, didn't he? Yeah. Now, it's conceivable that he may have lied because he was on probation and right. he just didn't want to go back to Jeff. But it seems like an insane thing to lie about because they yeah, probably murder not care. Yeah. yeah. And uh, on top of that, too, his phone pinged very close to where the bodies were found that day. Hmm. And it's all woods, right? It is, so yeah. It's like, what are you doing out there? Yeah. Just walking your dog? Yeah. Huh. So that's something that's that I could liable I could picture being a likely scenario. Yeah. Wow, that's fucking crazy if that is true. Mm. But then what why did they end up fucking murdered? I think maybe they might have tried to try to make a run for it. And it was just the one guy who had kidnapped them, according to the story. The other two were waiting in the guy's house. Okay. So if it's the one guy and the two girls, the girls might have thought like all right, this is getting worse by the second. Maybe one of us should make a run for it, because they did have to cl have to go across the the creek. Yeah, and I think if they were going to make a run for it, that might have been the time where they tried. Where the other guys came down and be like, "Ha ha, I got you." Kind of like could have been. Yeah, that's and they were killed on that side and then brought back over, or they tried to swim back over and were. No, I think the likely scenario is that they were led from the south end of the bridge. I think it was the south end down the hill, across a private drive, across Deer Creek, and onto this guy named Ron Logan's land, which is where they were found. And I think once they got to Ron Logan's land, something happened there, and then they were both stabbed to death. Which is bad enough, but I mean, like, you, you gotta think of, like, the alternative is being trafficked. Yeah, I mean, they were... Yeah. Oof. You don't want to say it, but yeah. That's like the, maybe the better option. I don't know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Fuck. Was that in a Facebook group that you're in? No, no. No, that was, that was in the Daily, Daily Mail article. That was a published article. Right, 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 but like, you didn't find it linked? And no, no yeah, somebody sent it to me. Okay, have you seen anybody <clears> talking <throat> about it in any, any of those groups? Yeah, some people are just like, well, there's a guy putting out a book about that landowner, Ron Logan, okay. who seems to think that he is the guy who orchestrated all this, which I don't think. Okay. Because the guy was like fucking 79 when the murders happened. Yeah, that would... But he is an old creep who has a history of violence against women. So I can see him taking part in it, but as far as like orchestrating a child kidnapping plot, I don't think so. I think he could just be a guy that's a part of it. But if you're playing like offensive coordinator <clears throat> to the murders, then yeah. Especially if you have 79 years of being violent towards women, you know what I mean? You right. could just, like, sit up in the booth and tell these fucking guys what to do. And here's a crazy thing. The first search warrant that they that they obtained was for his house. They thought that he was the killer for some reason. It's never been revealed what led them to believe that he was the killer, but they had a search warrant that was for his property, and they didn't find anything 
And if this story is true, it could be because the girls never made it there and there was never any um, any kind of proof linking him, yeah. it, linking his intent to what they were planning. And you guys were on this property? Yeah. Was he still the landowner at that time? Yeah, he was oh. dead. Oh, he was dead He then? died, I think, two years ago. <clears throat> so he oh, died right really? before we got there, I think. Oh, okay. So he's, it's just the two guys then that are alive. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was 84 when he died. I heard he died at that Pizza Hut you guys went to. No, he didn't, Jake. No, he didn't. Oh, no, I feel sick. (laughs) That was a good Pizza Hut, man. I I was so jealous when you guys posted that picture of the trash guys. I was like, God damn it. Yeah, Delphi is a nice small town. Yeah. But if you have the chance to go, definitely go just for the fucking Pizza Hut, man, because that... There are other Pizza Huts. You do not have to go all the way to Delphi. (laughs) I think, I mean, Delphi Pizza Hut should send us at least a couple of pies for... As many plugs as we've we've given them yeah, at this send point. Me, send me a, a fucking fountain drink in the mail. <laughs> Did they have the red cups? <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, man, Ooh. I would have left with a purse heaven. full. <laughs> no buffet though. I think that might have been a COVID protocol though. I liked it. No, that was before COVID, wasn't it? It was during COVID. Was it? <laughs> yeah. You sure? I'm positive. Yeah, you're right. We started this podcast after COVID. <laughs> or during COVID. Uh, but yeah. The buffet was uh, not open when we. No, it was not. Yeah, no. yeah. We just ordered regular ass pizza, sodas, sat there and lived like kings. You know what was open when you guys were there? John's mother's pussy. And the podcast is over. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the case, but John's mother's pussy is probably a better option. I'll tell you when I see John's mother's pussy, face closed. <laughs> Does that mean you're not going to eat my mother's pussy? <laughs> I think that means he's in it, right? Yeah. Erection, Your Honor. Sustained. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this you truly is it. retard hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like the only podcast with an after hours section. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking our own episode, talking stinkers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Going right into it. I'm just going to start my McDonald's order now. <laughs> All right. Well, I had a lot of good fun with you guys. I did too. Yeah, it was Anything you guys want to promote before we go? No, oh, man. Um, I'll be at Punchline the weekend of New Year's Eve if anybody oh. in the area would like to have a fun night out. That's exciting. Should be a fun show. Nice. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'll be in uh, San Francisco in uh, end of January. Good so for you. Anybody, yeah, thank you. I'm going to... Sketchfest? I'm going to lead the parade. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be out there for Sketchfest. Getting out there early for Pride. <laughs> yeah, you know, I like to... I like the tailgate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Three month tailgate. Yeah, three month tailgate. Uh, so yeah, if you're out there and then, uh, yeah, it'll be other places too. So don't come. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like my wife. <laughs> what about you, Mikey? Uh, buy my book on Perks. Yeah. Uh, I received the email that I've been waiting for today, which is that my book is on its way. Nice. So it's finally fucking printed. Nice. I finally have a copy in my hands. Yeah, Hopefully you have not had tomorrow. one in your hand yet. No, tomorrow should be the day where I get my first copy in my hands. I can't fucking wait, man. It's taking forever, but I'm glad it's finally here. But yeah, if you haven't bought my book yet, go to onperks.com. You can get a copy of my newest book, On Perks. It is thoroughly idiotic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm really happy that I put it out. It's been a labor of love. I'm proud of you. And I'm, I'm glad so happy I'm, for I'm you. proud of you too. And I can't wait to read it. What are you proud of me? I didn't do anything. I just love you so much, both of you guys. Oh, man. Three, all three of you guys. I love you guys too. I, I love, I love you, guys. you so much. And I love you, listeners and audience members. Yeah, I love you too. Yeah, I love you guys. <laughs> we don't say that often enough, but I love you guys. Please buy my book on perks. It'll make me happy. It just makes my life easier. Just having a little extra income. In uh <laughs> You really started to get personal quick. <laughs> <laughs> I need every dollar I can get. <laughs> I'm going downhill fast. <laughs> Nyaki. <clears throat> no, but I'm, yeah, I would, I would like to eat in Nyaki in uh, some nicer places. Turns my stomach the way you say it. Oh, well. I got another thing that's going to turn your stomach. Is it your open penis? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah, so check out my open penis on New Year's Eve. <laughs> no, but please buy my book on perks.com. I think you're going to love it. All right, guys. All right, everybody. See you later. Thank you. Have fun. Bye.